Support the Amigos podcast and keep the Amiga goodness flowing for just a dollar a month. Visit our page at patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Amigos, the podcast about everything Amiga. Amigos is a proud member of the Throwback Network, your home for quality retro podcasts. And now, here are your hosts, Aaron Dowdy and John Bodovkar Schaller. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we're going to talk about gods. But uh, before we do, we've got just a, a little bit of feedback from our last episode. Uh, this was a comment on our blog from our friend Dar. Uh, he said that he wishes there were some more talk on deluxe paint. Um, and uh, <laughs> That amazes me. Yeah, to, to remedy that, uh, Will Williams, our guest, he's uh, posted some more deluxe paint talk up on the... Uh, he actually sent me an email and I posted that to the blog. So uh, head over to AmigosPodcast.com to check that out. There's some, some other things he thought about deluxe paint before he... Uh, you know, after after our interview, yeah. Will Will's a real nice guy. Uh, I chatted with him off air, and uh, he has an uh, he's got a really good eye. He's he's quite an excellent uh, photo artist. He's got some awesome photography on his on his web page. We're going to link it up if you want to go check it out. Uh, he's he's a real good hand and a great guy. We appreciate him coming on last week and uh, talking about that deluxe paint. Yeah, uh, Dar went on to say that on YouTube there are a couple video tutorials for uh, deluxe paint three and four. They were actually released on VHS back in the day. Um, the a guy named Dan Silva, who created Deluxe Paint, uh, did the first three. Um, wow! And uh, but he didn't do the the other two versions. Um, and he said, uh, since you've discussed 3D software, uh, Dan went on to work with uh, Autodesk later on. Uh, there was also a rumor back in the day. I don't know, Aaron, if you heard this, that Deluxe Paint, or at least the Amiga, was used to make some of the graphics for Sonic the Hedgehog. Huh. You know, it's funny because I was just looking at some stuff today where apparently there had been an attempt that apparently they thought about they were going to port me, uh, Sonic over to the Amiga. Mm-hmm. And uh, there are some screens. Now, this could be, but maybe that's because they were using the art, uh, you know, to, uh, to port back over to the Genesis. Who you knows? never know. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, they were the discussion about the Lux Paint on, on, on the, uh, the web page, uh, it was mentioned that the. Deluxe paint, to a certain extent, is still relevant today and still being used for various re- technical reasons, which I thought that was kind of neat too. Yeah, you know, so gosh, after all these years, because we, I mean, if you'll recall, that we just dis- discussed it, deluxe paint, the very first edition was, you know, it was out in '85. So that's a, <laughs> it's truly astounding. It really is. It really <laughs> is. Uh, so that's the uh, that's all our feedback for this week. Uh, do you have any news for us this week, Aaron? I wouldn't call this news, but I would call it amusing. Uh, diversion. I was uh, doing some research for a for something this week, and came across just a little post in a in a forum. Uh, some fellow who's made a a body blows short film. Huh. Uh, I've watched it. It's wacky. Uh, I, I I thought the monk got screwed in this film. <laughs> Uh, but uh, where, where does the does the ninja come into play? No, no, he wasn't oh, involved. They left that on the table. And the, the and the and the short film also in court. And I mean short. I'm talking like it's like five minutes long, <laughs> with, including the wacky blooper reel at the end. So we'll link it up. It's on YouTube. Uh, it's it's entertaining. And how often are you going to see someone that's going to make a movie? I mean, this just came out like this in the past month. Uh, I don't. So I don't know what would make a person. I'd like to say. They heard our podcast and were inspired to go do Body Blows because the times mesh up perfectly. But I'm sure this is in the works for a while. So go check it out. We'll link it up. It's it's pretty amusing. That's really cool. I always like to see stuff like that. Uh, the The next thing that I, I'd like to talk about is uh, we have a new web host. Uh, several of you have uh, complained. Complained is too strong a word. Have, uh, have had have, difficulty. Have had difficulty. Uh, downloading our podcast because uh, our original host was not really a host at all. I was basically hosting our podcast in a folder on Google Drive, which is, uh, <laughs> which is you know, it, it follows our way of doing things as cheaply as possible. But uh, we're getting to be to the point where we have so many people trying to access the podcast at once that people are getting errors. There were weird geo lock things going on. 
So uh, to remedy that, uh, one of our listeners and uh, Patreon supporters, Brent Dowdy, also Aaron's brother, he's a bum, uh, has uh, graciously given us some space on his uh, on his host on his uh, you know his storage. So we've got uh, the last episode, episode thirty eight, up there. Uh, if you've had problems in the past, uh, everybody I've talked to says that that everything's great with this new host, and going forward, all of our episodes will be posted there. Beautiful, because I see that quite often where people have trouble. Pulling them down, mm-hmm. and uh, we definitely don't want to run anybody off uh, with a uh, uh, with any technical difficulty. So it's great, and it's, it's we appreciate Brent stepping up. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the game now. Gods, beautiful. So Gods was released in 1991, uh, and it was a, a game by the Bitmap Brothers, who we've uh, covered before. Uh, the last game we did by them, I believe, was the Chaos Engine. Is that correct? I think you're right. I don't think we've. In fact, I, that may be the only. I think that's the only two we've done from them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're mostly known for. I mean, obviously, they're a big Amiga player. Um, Cad- Cadaver one and two, which I'd say I've not played those, but they keep popping up in my notes. So I have to. Yeah. Go um, into those. Of course, the Chaos Engine series, uh, Magic Pockets, uh, the Venerable uh, Speedball Two, Brutal Deluxe, <laughs> an excellent game. Xenons one and two, which I had a had to go with Xenon two earlier tonight. Still, uh, another game that was I really enjoyed, and and much like this game had a, a rock and soundtrack. Uh, one of this game's claims to fame is the title song. Uh, it's by a group, I guess you could call them a group called Nation Twelve, and and appeared on their only album. The song uh, it goes into the wonderful, you know. Uh, really neat. Uh, allegedly, uh, this was the first time a theme tune from a computer game became a commercial release. Interesting. Um, which I thought that's kind of wacky. Yeah. Now, if you were uh, a bitmap follower, you'll know that they had uh, Xenon Two. They had a uh, an outfit called Bomb the Bass, which I'd actually heard of Bomb the Bass, who did their song in that, which was another awesome song. We had a friend over here earlier when I was playing, and he was kind of commenting on the rock and you know 90s tune you know but it's it's another awesome awesome theme so this music this and the hilarious thing about it is here's this awesome opening music and then there's no there's really no in game music no you get a little you get a little ditty mm. when you first arrive in the level and when you complete a level it plays a little tune but it's nowhere near on the level of the title screen it's funny because on the Xenon 2 right uh, awesome title song you play the game and you have the choice, sort of like Blood Money. You can either hear the music or you can hear the in game sounds. I always, as much as I like the tune, I always turn on in game sounds because I just don't, I like to hear explosions, mm-hmm. and, you know. And in this game, the, the sound effects are really well done. You know, the knives as they come out make a satisfying kind of, ooh. And, yeah. And when you jump, you get that grunt. I don't know what to think about that, but it is a grunt. It I is mean, a grunt. there's a lot of grunting and. And wow, <laughs> you know, kind of yeah, like enemies James Brown brain. style scre- <laughs> halted screeches and screams, and and there's when those banshee chicks fly in, they're like, Wah! right, yeah, right. they're going all crazy. Um, I was, you know, just a little background on on uh, on the game. Uh, you know, the Bitmap Brothers had their own little publishing arm, which was Renegade. Um, they also Renegade published all the Chaos Engines. They published some other stuff too, Sensible Soccer Series, uh, Iridium 2, which we talked about a, a week or two ago. Uh, apparently, uh, which I've never seen a, an American copy of this, but uh, but apparently it exists, uh, an NTSC copy, and it was published in this country by Konami. Really? That's interesting. Yeah, so, they're not even an American publisher. So now it's possible that uh, in, um, the people that, were, that compiled the information uh, confused. An American release of this with the with the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive version. Mm-hmm. It could have been a Konami. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I don't know. I don't know if there was an American release. I, I just don't know. Yeah. You know, I I know the releases I've always played were in PAL. So enough said. Um, the guy it was designed by a guy named Eric Matthews. He did Chaos Engine, the Cadaver. Uh, you know, these guys you hear the same thing over and over. One of the guys on design, though, named Steve Tall, his only credit, and that's what I mentioned, is, is called Buffalo Bill's Wild West Show. 
You know, I've seen that. Uh, You're kidding when me. When I'm browsing through the list of games on WHT Load, and I, I have not given it a shot yet, but I, I will. You've got to put that on your list, yeah. uh, Boat. But general, and, and uh, some of the little ditties in there, also Richard Joseph, who's a guy we've, a name we've, you know, heard banded around a million times. Um, this this had a, uh, a release on the Amiga, obviously. Uh, it had a, a PC release. It's this is one of the games that had a Tandy supported Tandy graphics, which I used to have a Tandy, so that stuck out to me uh, when I when I saw it come by. This came out on a lot of stuff though. Uh, DOS, I played this on the DOS uh, version. Um, the Archimedes, your favorite. Yeah. Um, the uh, uh, the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. I don't, do you remember seeing this on the Super Nintendo boat? Never. I saw never. it on the Genesis. This seems like a Genesis game. I mean, it just looks like a Genesis game. There were. Uh... I don't, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with quite a bit of the Super Nintendo catalog, and uh, it might have just not come out in the U.S. It's possible. Um, it's funny, we were our, our friend that was here, Chad, and I checked him out in the live stream, he he had mentioned that he had recognized the artist that did the, the uh, cover art, and sure enough, he was right, It was he's a big comic book guy. Uh, the box cover illustration was designed by the British comic book artist Simon Bisley. Uh and so, if you're into comics, you may you may me know about his work. Um, what did you think about the game overall, Boat? I mean, it's, we talked about this. It's a sl- sort of a slower paced platformer. Yeah, I, you know, it's it's it's. I think that this is typical of the puzzle platformer genre. Although it has, I think, definitely a lot more combat than your typical puzzle platformer. Um, the enemies spawn fast and furious. Uh, they don't spawn continuously, which is a blessing. It sort of spontaneously spawns. But yeah, they sometimes. just kind of come out of nowhere. Uh, they don't. Sometimes when it. you flip a switch, they'll pop in. Mm-hmm. And um, one thing that I read that I don't really know how you'd test, but it says that uh, this game received some critical acclaim because not only do the enemies kind of spawn right where you don't want them to, but they also kind of adapt to your skill. So I guess the better you play, by some measure, the the better the or you know the 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 more the enemies try and, and hit you. Now, have you heard that before? I, I read that somewhere. I, uh, you know, they will chase you down. Now, how if they if uh, if they change difficulty on the fly due to the way you're playing? Yes, who could say? Right. You know, only it's the, bit, only the Bitmap measure. Brothers good, I guess. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, the enemies are relentless sometimes. You know, this is a this is a real odd game. I mean, uh, in terms. I mean, platformers are usually fast and furious with lots and lots of, you know, bullets and just crazy stuff on it. This game, don't get me wrong, it's not slow. If you haven't seen it, I mean, it's, it's a platform game that takes place in various uh, environments that are sort of like, a, um, you know, a city. It, looks like, you're, or, well, it under, looks like you're almost in a castle the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you're up out on the top of the city and sometimes you're underneath in, these, in like these, you know, like rooms or whatnot. But, I mean, really... You, you you move around and your guy's sort of uh, awkward. He moves kind of awkward. <clears throat> he has a projectile and you can you can upgrade that. We'll get into that in a minute. But uh, one thing that <clears throat> sets this game apart uh, is you have the ability to duck, but you cannot duck and fire. You have to, which is a pain. I mean, it takes a lot of strategy to know when you to to to, to duck because when you there's a there's an inventory system in the game that when you pick up items, you can pick up uh, three items basically, and then you've got a fourth slot there where the cursor sets, and and so you can. And, and the, the the main reason that you can't duck is because when you push down and fire, you open this inventory. Correct. System. That's that's exactly what I was saying, and um, so you have to get used to. I mean, this game is not the kind of game you just hop in and play. You get you have to play this game on its terms, mm-hmm. right? And so and. The levels of the enemy fire vary, and they can come in at angles. You know, they lob stuff. They're, they're sometimes shots are straight. Sometimes they shoot while they're jumping. And so sometimes you can duck this stuff. Sometimes you can't. But one thing's for sure, you can't shoot and duck. And really, that little that part of the game, it you know, I don't want to say it's it adds the stretch. I don't, I don't know if I even like it. I don't know. It's just it's that's the game, you know. But right. I don't know. did you I, what did you think about that? Because it's a big deal, right? Well, it's. The reason why they did it, I, I I feel convinced, is just because they need they wanted to have an inventory system. There's no possible way that you could tell a player that they can't jump and fire at the same time. So being able to push down in the button to open up the inventory, you know, 
is the only place they could realistically put it. I don't think they said, well, let's make it impossible to duck and shoot to make the game harder. Well, it it absolutely does. It though. does. There's no question about um, it. We, me and Boat talked earlier. One, something else this game that has going for it on the Amiga, because I've heard the console versions. I, I like I said, I've played the Genesis version. It's quicker, right? And I've read that other versions are that are sped up, right? Um, this moves at a leisurely pace that allows that that makes the uh, using up on the joystick to jump an okay thing. It's definitely more tolerable. Yeah, it's not twitchy. Mm -hmm. You can you can get away with you know, and your guy moves so slow, you can get away with jumps that you know you've got time to plan, mm -hmm. right? That that's a that, and so the game works well on the platform, so which is nice. Um, the uh, the enemies are interesting. Yeah, they are varied to a pretty decent degree. I think that they're, uh, you know, for the most part, they're well animated. They're well drawn. Uh, they're not. They're very brown. Not most of the enemies are the same color palette, um, but they're they're well drawn. I'll give it that. Yeah, um, they make weird noises. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, True. Uh, something else this game has going on is is, uh, and this is another huge chunk of the game. I mean, uh, some the meat of the game is switch puzzles. Yeah. Um, you have and, and buttons, uh, and you'll have uh, a switch that will turn off the trap, turn on a trap. Combinations of the switch will do will turn traps on and off. Sometimes they'll open trap doors. Sometimes they'll open uh, parts of the ceiling. You know, and uh, these are how you move through the uh, the levels. You know, by hitting these uh, doors and stuff. And sometimes there'll be secrets that having the switches in certain combinations will. You'll see something that you can't get to, and you won't know why, and you'll have to try to hit the switches in the right combination. So that, that was a neat... There's a strategy to it. I mean, I guess you'd call that... Would you call that strategy, but Well, it's not really. It's trial and error, because there's nothing about the switches that will tell you from the get-go that they'll operate something. What you have to do is you have to, A, pull a switch, or B, think, maybe they don't want me to pull that switch walk forward until you can't progress and then walk back and then hit the switch to try and progress. Right. And and you don't and often you don't have to fool with it. I mean mm -hmm. if you if you can do the switch that turns up the trap off and just keep going. You don't have to sit there and try to figure out what the switch is doing in a certain combination yeah. to get certain goodies to come down. So so to call it a, a puzzle, it's not really solving a puzzle. It's not like you'd solve oh, I'm trying to think of a good example. But there are games out there that actually are the, the puzzles are logical. Yeah. This is more of just, you know, I wonder what happens when I pull this switch or I wonder what happens when I push this block. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing, sometimes it's not readily apparent until you progress further. Yeah, I mean it's this the switch puzzle thing has sort of been it's been done now. But it, it was probably I don't recall seeing this much in the old days, so it's probably something that was pretty fresh when they did it. You know, again it, it it keeps you just from whooping to the I mean, really, that's what the thing that causes you to, to, you know, you can see a switch, you'll go to a certain area you wouldn't have gone to. So right. they use it as a play element, that's too. That's very true. Uh, which, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, as you go through the game, uh, you occasionally will acquire a, some kind of special powers or power-ups. Um, when you And then after the, after every so often, you'll come across a special power-up that will summon a shopkeep, which is big burly dude with a sack over his shoulder walks on the screen, and then you'll go to a, a, a shop. Uh, again, this is something else, uh, sort of like a Blood Money or a Xenon Two. The screen fills up with all your options, and you, depending on how much money you've made, you can and you, money's obtained just by treasure, you pick up treasure, and you can pick up stuff like extra health, extra lives, uh, different types of shooting, uh, different type shooting arcs, uh, you know that sort of thing. Pretty and standard stuff. One thing that's really neat about this game, that as far as I know, is pretty unique to to platformers, is that when you pick up items and power-ups and things, they're represented as symbols, usually in, in, in squares. And a lot of times, it's not real easy to see what those things are. Uh, there is a small green bar that runs along the bottom of the screen. And when you pick something up, it will actually uh, go across like a stock ticker and show you what you've picked up, you know, or if it's points or whatever, and actually tell you, hey, you've got this now. Uh, I really like that a lot because in a lot of these games that we review, you know, you pick up power-ups, you pick up collectibles, and you have no idea what, what, what you're doing with them. Yeah, you know, I, I, I mentioned this to Boat earlier, but uh, again, not having an NTSC version of this, I, I've never seen that bar until I played this in emulation uh, because it was off the screen. And you can play Gods, the PAL version on NTSC, 
see screen okay because you're not oh, at the time I didn't think I was missing anything. The bar would help. <laughs> He's right. That would help immensely. So that that's a nice ad. Uh, that uh, that uh, you know that's a good idea. Um, this progresses. It's it's pretty long. I mean, I've got I've gotten pretty far into the game. I've never beaten it. You know, uh, the uh, uh, I, it's got four levels. Um, and when I say four levels, I don't mean four levels. I mean four sections, right? Mm-hmm. Made up multiple, multiple levels. levels. Yeah. And there's a guard you have to, at the end of each uh, level. I've gotten past the first guy long ago uh, uh, my skills have depleted over the years uh, but uh, you know it this game has a, a feel that you don't forget you know because I could I picked it up this week when I saw we were going to review it and uh, it felt I felt comfortable it's like you know it it it's uh, again it it, ten, it lends itself to picking it back up now you're not going to whiz through it <laughs> but you can at least get back to the gameplay Um Anyway, after you beat a guardian at the at the uh, end of each level, uh, you you uh, your guy effectively is going to uh, try to get immortality from the gods, and and he gets it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, overall, though, um, I I like the look of it. It they've done an excellent job with the textures. Uh, the uh, the guy's cool looking. Mm-hmm. You know, he's sort of squatty. I mean, in a, in a weird he's. Um, What's the best way? He's uh, built like a fire plug. You know, he's like, he's not short, but he's just, he's he's thick. Yeah. Um, the uh, I like the shopkeeper. He's a big muscular guy. The monsters are crazy. I mean, you've got these kind of uh, ape creatures that just walk on their hands and have their hindquarters, like, basically lopped off in a big metal plug. You know, and you see some different variants of that. Then there's some, there's some rhinos. There are these, like, banshees that fly through and scream and... Mm-hmm. Harpies, harpies, yeah, harpies. Um, the uh, the different shot abilities are neat. Mm-hmm. Again, I go back to Xenon Two, which I don't have. You played Xenon Two no. yet? Um, you know, in Xenon Two, your ship could acquire all these different firing arcs and stuff. And and this is the this is a similar concept. Yeah, except it's one man. <laughs> um, for those of you that are familiar with the uh, the NES canon, and may not be as familiar with with uh, different Amiga games like me. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've ever played Castlevania 2 before and uh, you've been through a dungeon, uh, it's very, very similar. Or not a dungeon, I'm sorry, a mansion. Uh, it's very, very similar to one of the mansions in Castlevania 2, uh, the way that you kind of move up and down stairs. You're trying to make these jumps. Some of them you have to make basically pixel-perfect jumps to progress from one area to the next. Um, and there's there's little to no direction given about where you're supposed to go. It's a very exploration. They ex- they expect you to explore. Yeah, and and sometimes you just don't think you can make a jump, and you can. Right. Uh, and I've noticed that you'll get in some places when uh, where you'll just be overwhelmed. There's so much happening. As sl- we say, it's slow, but it can spe- you know if an enemy, certain enemies are very quick and they'll come in mass, and so if you're not in a position where you can take them out. Mm-hmm. You'll get killed quick. Yeah. Oh, we should also mention that your health is a. Uh, it's represented by like a, a brown liquid a beaker. And a beaker, yeah. Yeah, and as you get killed, it's sort of, sort of like your vitality, yeah. let's say. Yeah. And it, this thing will drain more and more. When you finally die, your guy sort of explodes in like screaming skulls. Yeah. Which is an awesome effect. It's very. Uh, it's, this game. This game grabs at it, at you know, the young boy in you. You know, the teenager mm-hmm. that liked, you know. <laughs> Judas Priest or or, right. or so, you know heavy metal magazine yeah, yeah which uh, so I appreciate the efforts there you know really like I said the attention to detail the jewels that pop out and the little the little stuff you pick up mm-hmm. the hidden stuff there's a lot of hidden stuff uh, hidden buttons and and whatnot it's just it's a good package if you can get past the uh, the the uh, and the controls are good no, so yeah, I don't want to say they're not good very well. if you can get past the speed. I read some reviews of this from from different people that just flat out hated it. They said it was overrated and it was crap. And I was like, wow, I'm surprised people hated this as much. Yeah. But some people don't like a game that runs at this speed. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, it reviewed pretty well. In fact, it reviewed real well. Um, it received a lot of good scores. You know, you're looking at mostly 90s mm-hmm. and up. Uh, so it was it was a pretty good hit when it came out. I think the lowest score I saw for it was a seventy nine, which still is pretty good. Yeah, well, I, I can just I just know from the the platformers that we've reviewed on the Amiga. I mean, this is definitely in the top 
the top 50. You know, it's definitely better than uh, been many, many, many of the platformers we reviewed. I enjoyed this game tremendously more than Lionheart. See, I, we, I, I disagree with you there. I don't know. You I, prefer Lionheart to Gods? I, I thought Lionheart was a good game that was flawed, where I think this is a good game that's not flawed, but I think Lionheart was uh, a little more um, ambitious, you know, in my opinion. Uh, is this better? It's hard to compare them, really, for me. They're they're very they're not very similar. Well, they're both games where you control a guy and you're walking well, around I and you're killing things. You're right. You're right. I mean, I I like them both. I, the the character is much cooler. This is a much. This <laughs> it's is hard to get more. It's hard to get lamer. Than yeah, the, the that's guy. the Lionheart <laughs> guy is a dud. I mean, we, I'll give you that. He looks like a dud. You know, he's no ninja ant. That's for darn sure. <laughs> um, <coughs> I eBayed the heck out of this thing. You're going to love this uh, boat. There was one of these in the U.S. for sale. Okay. Get your checkbook out. He's only asking 300 bucks U.S. Boy. Yeah. Is, is this a complete box copy? I think it comes with the thing that makes you immortal for that price. <laughs> um, the uh, Internationally, uh, as usual, uh, they're, they're doing much better. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 60 bucks U.S., uh, you know, of course, that's not shipped here. Mm-hmm. Um, I looked around. Like I said, I knew there was. I knew there were reports of this for the Genesis, and they, they mentioned a bunch of other ones. Um, they also, I found out that there was a uh, a Game Boy Advance ROM of this, a version of which I thought was interesting. Uh, uh, they also mentioned that none of the other versions have the cool song at the beginning. I wonder which, if that was a special deal they signed, you know, with the Amiga Publishing. Well, these maybe, maybe the band thought that uh, you know it's hard to tell if the the band signed some kind of special deal with them or what. Well, the uh, again the Bitmap Brothers had this kind of rock star mentality, mm-hmm. and so like they would always have pictures of them standing in front of choppers and stuff. These guys were like the cool guys, right? Um, again, I I tried to look up stuff on Nation Twelve, the band, and I couldn't find hardly anything that wasn't this game. Yeah. But they had an album. Um, and uh, apparently there was a guy, I think the guy in the, that that was performing in Nation 12 was a guy named John Fox, I think. Again, it gets a little hazy. I think one of the guys from Bomb the Bass is part of the band too. You know, so there's a connection there. Mm-hmm. I think that's a pretty interesting aspect of the game. It's a shame that that song doesn't appear more and that something else doesn't appear that's, I'd say that's where the shortcomings of the game. Now, I guess the quietness of the dungeon sort of adds to the effect, you know. Yeah, I didn't miss because there were so many sound effects going on. I didn't really miss it as much as I missed background music in other games. But that is one thing that Lionheart had going for it. I will say this. If any game does not need a rocking soundtrack while playing it, it's this one. Yeah. You really need something soothing <laughs> because it's so slow. Uh, but overall, I like it. This is actually, like I said, it, it's a good game. It's a good fun platform, and it's different. And uh, so, you know, if you get a chance, check it out. One last thing uh, before we close on this one. Um, <clears throat> I noticed that they, uh, there's a Bitmap Brothers book that was kickstarted, I think, last year. And uh, they're taking pre-orders on it now. Uh, it, looked, it, it looked interesting. It's, a, uh, it's called the, the Bitmap Brothers Universe. It's the official history of the Bitmap Brothers. It's, of course, they're a British bunch. We went into them, in, you know, more extensively. In the last time we had them in, but it's got uh, some interesting stuff on some of the games that they released, some stuff they didn't release. So we'll link it up uh, if you're interested in pre-ordering. It might be a good book if you're in the Bitmap Brothers. And again, they had a good track record. Cool. Well, we'd like to thank our sponsors: Adam Bradley, Chris Folds, Will Williams, Zach Zimmerman, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Chad Halstead, and Brent Dowdy. And uh, if you'd like to sponsor our show, uh, you can check us out over at Patreon.com/slash Amigos Podcast. Aaron, what do you think about doing Karateka next week? Sounds good. All right. We'll see you then. Adios. 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 Adios.